all right guys so good morning here from me and no rio and uh, i want to talk to you guys give you guys a little talk about respect and confidence and um not sure where this video is going to end up going so i'm just kind of ad-libbing it i just had a couple things on my mind and as i'm running it through my mind i want to share it with you guys as i'm going all right for one actions speak louder than words what are people doing let me tell you something guys um if you've got somebody trying to help you help your mule now you guys you guys need to understand the difference in reality and persona and perception and not perception okay so a lot of people they say hey you know what i think you're an asshole think what you like you're not phasing me i don't really care fact is probably am but here's the deal i'm trying to help you i'm trying to give you something i ain't trying to take nothing from you I have, when I get a mule that's broke, ready, rot, ready to go, and I can say, hey, this mule's safe, it's ready to go, well, it's sold that day. So I don't need your help selling no mule. I ain't asking nothing from you. I don't care if you buy it or not. You don't, somebody will. There's, a, there's more of a demand than a supply for good, legitimate, broke mules that are sure enough right. All I gotta do is use my expertise to find the correct right mules with the proper dispositions, the proper traits, with the right miles, the right time, and the right training, and get them ready to go. You can only ride so many. I can sell all that I can ride and get that way. So that's that's your reality. What I was trying to do is give back to you guys what's helping my family make a living and enjoy, but the main thing is what I'm getting the most enjoyment out. My life is a very nice life because I enjoy mules, and mules like me, and I like mules. Um, spent my whole life riding horses I don't have anything against horses but I like mules better for a multiple many different kind of reasons so I had this clinic here I didn't ask nothing from nobody some people were really nice and donated some money helped me out where it didn't cost me so much to help me pay for the cabin hey my buddy he said I need 1500 on the cabin to rent it uh, for the weekend which is very reasonable for the farm zero he charged me nothing for the farm my friends were wonderful he said, yeah, you can use my entire farm, you know, thousand acres just for us to play on for free. But needs a cabin for 1500 because he's got to pay people to come in and clean it and do this and do that. And that's what he gets. You know, he gets 70, normally he gets more than that. Normally he gets $75 per night per person uh, for the duck, duck hunting people. So that's a great time. But I was trying to give you confidence and ability to ride ability to understand your mule communicate with the mule build up the market worldwide uh, for mules change the perception of mules see what people can do see push mules push people uh, change the stereotype of mules are dumb lazy stereo uh, stupid and a uh, lower than a horse well, that's ridiculous if you if you've been around mules very long and good mules there ain't nothing worse than a bad mule I ain't arguing with you I don't like all mules I like good mules but at, for trail riding they'll smoke a horse ain't no way around it and stuff your average mule will beat your good damn good horses now if i was roping team pinning cutting yeah horses are going to be better they're more competitive but not for trail rod not for what we do not for packing not for day in even on a ranch working cattle competition out of a box where you're to the second and that's going to win money hell yeah get american bred quarter horse no doubt but when you're trying to go into a herd real nice and slow, rope a cow, drag it out, not cause an episode, and use that sucker for 12 hours a day in the mountains and the rocks, and you'll still beat a horse's ass. There ain't no way around it. People, when I went out to them ranches and they're swapping horses, getting fresh horses, my mule's fine. He ain't hardly warmed up. So keep that in mind too. Don't limit uh, what you think a mule can do by what somebody told you or what you saw on Hee Haw. There's more to it. They're not the stupid animal that people think they are. Also, what your grandpa thought about a mule, what your daddy thought about a mule, ain't got nothing to do with mules today. Back then, horses was worth something, and they bred the best horses to the best, the best studs. If you had a junk mare, it wasn't worth breeding, they bred it to the neighbor's jack. Those mules are hybrids. They don't produce, they don't reproduce, you're not building on those. Those mules are irrelevant to the mules that we're getting today. They're not related. There's nothing in common with them. Now they're taking the best horses, the best mares. There's more value in a mule. They're breeding the best horses, and now they're going around, they're like, hey, Let's get with with uh, Chris French. Get get some straw sent off of his jack. He's got trademark copyright stuff like that. They're breeding damn good jacks. They're not going to what, 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 what that donkey in your pasture over there breed a mare. You reckon? 
they're not doing that no more. Now they're looking for jacks that, and they're holding these jacks to a standard. They're getting some, there's some damn good mules out there that, that do something, they're about something. So no reason like, well, my daddy, my granddaddy used to have a mule and that mule was stubborn. So what, he's dead, he ain't around no more. Ain't got nothing to do, he's not related to mine. We didn't pass those genetics down. Those genetics have not been passed down from mule to mule, generation to generation. They start today. Whatever mule's born today ain't related to the mule's born yesterday. It's what that horse has got and what the, what the donkey's got. So keep that in mind that the mules today are different. They're better. They're better minded. They're better quality. They're better bred. They're ready to go. Now, there's some really great mule trainers out there, and I learn stuff from them all the time. I'm not trying to tell you that I know everything there is to know about mules. I know more than most people because of my experience of learning things the hard way. But what I can do as good or better than every other mule trainer out there because of my background, and it has nothing to do with the background of mules or horses, is give people confidence and understand about confidence. I grew up in martial arts my entire life. The entire thing is about building self-confidence. That, none of them is going to beat me at. Let me tell you some reality and stuff. You listen to me, you ride with me, you hang out with me, your confidence will build up. The more confident you are, the better rider you're going to be. It's mental. Mentally, there is no trainer out there, mule trainer, that comes from my background. There might be, and I don't know who he'd be, but there might be one as good. There is none better at building people's confidence because of my background of training people from kids. I've had kids that have been molested, raped, hurt, abused, anything that you can possibly do, come in uh, just mentally broken and build them up to damn cage fighters that would whip your ass and hand it back to you and say, yes, sir, did you enjoy your ass kicking? That's what I can do for somebody. That's what I've been doing my entire life and stuff. You know, I did the military thing, everything else, everything that you need to build up confidence. There's nobody more confident that they'll be able to handle whatever shit that comes up in the world than I am. That I've got, that I got in spades. Um, look at my little daughter right now, she's three years old. And you ask her, she's scared, she goes, I'm not scared, I'm a bishop. Well, I was raised that way and so was all the other bishops. We ain't got no reason to believe that, we just do believe that, it's mentally. So, um, my daughters are very confident people because I told them to be. No other reason. And that's why I said, we, we give them the skills and stuff, but it's mentally being prepared and mentally believing in yourself. So here's the thing, just like when we were doing karate, some of the things that you think you're doing to build confidence are absolutely gonna break and destroy your confidence. That arena riding with your mule and not doing anything else and doing all that groundwork, that's a big part of it. Nothing wrong with that, but it ain't gonna build your confidence. Is it something that's necessary? Damn right. You gotta go into karate gym and you gotta learn how to do a front kick and a side kick and you gotta do your basics, you gotta do your foundation. You have to build something on that. Yes, it's still, that ain't where your confidence is really gonna come from. Your confidence is gonna be accomplishing goals task and believing and you're only going to believe when you've done it and you and you have done that so with that said let me let me tell you this right here let's say that you go in a neighborhood and it's a it's a bad neighborhood and you're fixing to get in a fight well you're you're kind of scared so you're going to run and you're going to you're not going to assume that you're going to be safe and you're going to run away now let's say i give you a 44 magnum and you know how to shoot this 44 magnum so you walk down there and now you're a little more braver. You're not necessarily ducking and running every type of deal. Well, you done got yourself in the heart of it. You look down and you realize you ain't got no bullets. Now you're really scared because now you went further than what you would have went and yourself, you found yourself in a deeper situation than you would have went had you not had a gun. But now your gun ain't loaded, okay? Now let's say, let's say you've got a grizzly bear, a pet grizzly bear. And this pet grizzly bear, he loves you. He'll protect you. He'll fight to death. Well, you're rocking that sucker down there on the chain and it's a big grizzly bear he's strutting down the road like he owns the thing and everybody's scattering out well, you're damn sure confident you're a badass you have a big grizzly bear well now unless you walk around this dark corner alley you go down there and your grizzly bear gets terrified starts shaking and gets scared and that grizzly bear runs off now well damn sure are you scared your grizzly bear just turned and run the hell off whatever scared that grizzly bear damn sure is going to scare you let me tell you something people that's your mule you are your mule's grizzly bear okay that, if you, that, everything, that thing, everything your mule or your horse does is that he's a prey animal. He builds his confidence up because you're his grizzly bear. You are his grizzly bear. When you get scared and nervous, you damn sure gonna make him scared and nervous. If your grizzly bear is strutting around like he's a cock of the walk, you're gonna handle shit better. That's the way your mule is. 
that's why when you see a lot of people they can't get their mules and stuff to cross the ditch i sit on it and it rides across i sit on the mule and it takes the lead and leads off you know why because i'm a grizzly bear i'm damn sure a grizzly bear and i know it they know it they can sense it they pick up on it their confidence goes through the roof well you get on there you're scared to death you're a scared grizzly bear you're a predator everything about you is a predator your eyes are set forward like a predator. Your ears are pinned back to a mule or a horse. That means you're pissed off. You might not be pissed off, but in their body language, your eyes are set forward, your ears are pinned back, you're a pissed off predator. Understand that. Now, when they learn to accept you and they and they love you and they care for you or they decide that you're their buddy or more likely what reality is, is they decided you're their personal pissed off predator there to protect them, then their confidence up. When you get on there and you ride up to a ditch and you start getting nervous and you start getting scared, then hey, so are they. You did it, you made it, because you're a scared grizzly bear. All right, accept your role. Between a mule and you, you need to you need to be and you need to convince them more that you're a grizzly bear and you're a badass and you can handle the situation. And if they get stuck, they're gonna come that you're gonna come and save them. It ain't their job to save you. It ain't their job. Well, I want a mule to take care of me. Hey, it's a mule. If you die, it's going to walk over and eat the next green grass it sees or go hang out with his buddy. It ain't there to take care of you. You're there to take care of it and work out a partnership. It's taking care of itself, and because it's taking care of itself and it doesn't want to hurt itself, if you're sitting on top of it, you're probably safe too. But, but that's the reality of it stuff, the odds of it. Like I seen the other day, that mule took a face plant in that ditch. Its foot touched Pam's belly, and when it felt Pam's belly, it jerked its foot up and purposely face dived to, to not squish Pam. That's freaking rare. That's weird, okay? That ain't how it normally is. They don't normally walk right over you to get where they're going. No, will they try to jump you if it doesn't endanger them? Sure. Will they try to step over you? Sure. Will they face plant in a damn ditch to not hit you? That's pretty rare. Um, I was like, I was pretty. I literally watched its foot hit her belly and her jacket, and it jerk it up in the air and face plant, knowing it's gonna face plant. I was like, that's impressive. You can go to sleep knowing that that mule will not hurt you no matter what. If it's life dependent on it, it ain't going to hurt her. But understand, that's just, you can't count on that. You just got to go, that's pretty damn cool, and move on. Don't count on it. All right? So today's life lesson in confidence is understand today we're going to work on the mule. Understand the mule's thinking. If you come up to something and you're nervous, understand why it's nervous. Because if you're nervous, you're supposed to, the mule, it wants a leader doesn't want to lead you it wants to be the lead that's what it wants it's what it's looking for a strong dominant leader so if you're nervous it's nervous and that's why it's nervous i ain't got time right now i got stuff to do i'm at the house i gotta run in here sabrina's eyes are bothering her so that's my fault and i have to go in there and deal with that so we're gonna go in there and find out how to deal with that which is much harder than dealing with the mules i swear but anyways so I'm going to start doing some confidence building things for you. And I promise you this, you listen to me, you follow me, you will be more confident. So today we're talking about, we're, I'm giving you the why. Why is your mule getting nervous when you come up and it does, the next guy's mule? Why does Max's mule cross? Mine doesn't cross. And why is that consistent? Every mule I ride, it crosses. Every mule Virgil's ride, it's, it's, it crosses. So like I said, so let's get on this. And then I'm going to tell you in the series, you follow this series, I'm going to tell you how to become a more confident grizzly bear, what you need to do and what your skill sets are. So I'm not knocking anybody else's training, but here's the thing, guys, before you go and attack me and call me names, respect somebody who's trying to help you. I'm trying to give you something. I'm trying to give your mule something and I don't want nothing back in return. I don't want nothing from you. I don't need nothing from you at all nothing my life's set i ride mules in the sunshine and sit with my dog in this truck have beautiful daughters and i do exactly what i want to do in my life every day i wake up my biggest worry is what mule am i going to ride today i love my life i'm trying to give something back to you and give back to the business that has allowed me to enjoy my life to where every day i wake up my life is awesome i wake up every day and go wow i get another day i've had four heart attacks lived way longer than what they said i was got married and had a kid since they said i was going to die hey i'm happy I wake up happy. I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad that it's sunshiny. That's it. Hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you how simple life can be. Last night, my little daughter Cheyenne was taking a bath. I was giving her a bath. Her mom's blind, got laser burned her eyes out. So I'm giving her a bath. And a little ant, an ant, a little piss ant, this little piss ant, it's crawling across the bathtub right around the little ring here. She says, Daddy, Daddy, there's a bug in here. Is it a spider? I said, no, it's a piss ant. She said, what? I said, it ain't going to bother you. It's just a piss ant. She said, 
I, she, I said, don't worry about it. She said, I am worried about it. It's not my friend. I said, what do you want me to do? She said, kill it. It's a little tiny bit. I take my finger and I go, it's a piss ant, guys. Piss ants ain't worth nothing. Here's the deal. This piss ant's the best piss ant that ever died. So I take my finger and I squish that piss ant. Just like this. Boop. Dead piss ant. Is that hard? That little girl was amazed. My three-year-old looks at me and she says, Daddy, you're the bestest daddy I've ever seen. Because I can kill a piss ant. That's how simple life can be. The simple joys in life to have a daughter think you're... My daughter thinks I'm God. The most beautiful, awesome man in the world. Because I can take my finger and squish a piss ant. All right? That's how simple life can be. And that's the things in life that I enjoy and that I appreciate. That to that one person on this planet, I can be everything because I can kill a piss ant. I don't have to impress you. I don't have to be the best trainer. I don't have to do anything. All I got to do is take my finger and squish a piss ant. And my life is good. That's how good my life is. So understand that and let me give something back to you. Till you ride with me, sit in the saddle next to me, don't be judging me because here's the reality, guys. I didn't try to push no, you guys that come to the clinic know, did I try to push and sell mules there? No. Did I sell one single mule at the clinic? No. Did I, did I try to preach or buy or say that I was the best trainer there? No. Personally, I like Tim Weatherford. I thought I learned a lot from him. Hey, Paul Garrison, he jumped in there. Now, he charged some people some money, but he had to drive from Texas. It cost him something. I was in my pasture. It didn't cost me nothing. That's fine. But here's the deal. He took the people that were scared and nervous and went over there and worked with them and stuff. I can't be in two places. I could have worked with those people, but then I couldn't have worked with the people that wanted to do some real-life activities and really work on the confidence, build the confidence, and accomplish some tasks that's going to make their confidence real. And we'll get on that in the next speech that I give. But all of us worked together. Virgil was there. He'd help people lay down, saddle up their mules. Hell, he was saddling up people's mules. And while he was saddling up, his, his, he, put, he left his saddle on the porch with his own britching on there. Saddled up other people's stuff first, given to people. Virgil didn't get paid, and he paid his own gas money. While he was saddling up other people's mules, somebody walked over and took his damn britching off his saddle and stole it. Didn't bring it back, didn't give it to him. That's like my brother. He stole his damn britching off his saddle while he was saddling up for other people. Hey, y'all looking for assholes? Y'all looking in the wrong spot. Because I ain't asked nothing from nobody. I said, let me help you. Let me give you my form. Let's ride. Let's do the mules. Hell, borrow my mules. I just want you to appreciate and understand what mules can do. I just want you to see it and help spread the word at how cool mules are. I didn't ask anything other than that. And I asked nothing from nobody. So keep that in mind. Let's get this thing rolling, but let's say, let's stop talking about actions and words and my language and how I talk to you and how, if I think something's stupid, I say it's stupid. And let's go back and let's look at the actions. Who else is putting on free clinics? Who else is giving you their meals? Who else is busting your ass? Who else spends four to five hours a day talking and answering problems for nothing, for free? It's me. My actions are, I'm a hell of a nice guy if you get to know me and stuff. That's the deal. That's reality. Ask yourself this question. If Max is such an asshole, why does he have 200 friends that'll freaking do anything in the world for him daily, every day? You know why? It's because I'll do anything in the world for my friends, and they damn well know it. Anything. There is no limit. No limit. And they know that, and that's why there's no limit for me. That's why I'm the guy that gets stuff done and does that. So just let me run that through your head. Start thinking. And before you start judging, putting stuff on my page, blah, 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 and you sending me all these messages, blah, blah, blah. Let me understand you. I'm the coolest dad in the world because I can kill a piss ant. I don't need you.